الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد اي الاحباب may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love us and love you and forgive us and forgive you amin ya rabbil alamin i wanted to advise myself and my brothers and sisters in islam about the importance of taking care of our children and teaching our children proper and appropriate mannerisms that they should learn the proper conduct on how to respect their parents uh, respect their elders respect their teachers and respect one another and when we look at this this would solve so many of our problems that we face not just as a Muslim community but even the greater community that if we begin to raise our children we will probably see many more many less fatalities you know people killing through gun violence people killing over respect as we see look at the countless times uh, that we're seeing witnessing in American schools for example of children with guns coming in trying to kill their teachers killing other students killing themselves uh, there's a variety of reasons for this possibly perhaps self-respect possibly mental instability in general but also what the parents the parents allow for their children to partake in meaning the the influences if the, the television is raising their children with all the violence with all the sex then this is the end result Islam teaches us to be hands-on and if we cannot be hands-on that we, we facilitate having someone else to be hands-on meaning that you financially if you're a man and you have children and you're unable to be there for your children then you should at least strive your best to pay that your children can be in an environment of goodness where they can learn learn the religion learn morals learn respect but ultimately those things come back to the parents the parents are going to teach them are going to be the ones to discipline are the ones to give them that environment the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said ma min shayin athkulu fi meizan al mu'min yawm al qiyamah min husn al khulq wa inna allah yubghidu al fahish al badeed the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam said there isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of the believers than good manners and verily Allah hates wicked and sinful speech so speaking harsh and cursing and, and vile speech these are hated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and lying and, and so forth so as parents we have to set that example we have to teach our children morality and we have to teach our children the religion and in addition to that I want to mention first we'll go mention a hadith of the Prophet وسلم, where he said that the best of the people is those people who study the Quran and teach it so striving to have your children memorize and learn something from the Quran is imperative we need to do that as uh, as Muslim parents and that's going to help them uh, all throughout their life but in addition to that or better yet, looking at the hadith itself, The Prophet ﷺ said, The best of you is those who learn the Quran and then and teach it. So he said, The best of you is those who learn the Quran. So learn the Quran is not just memorizing the Quran. That is beautiful and that's the assas and we need that but it's learning the meanings it's learning something behind the tafsir what's the explanation of that ayah those verses uh, if it's not your language if Arabic's not your language then you need to know it in your language if it's Tagalog Filipino or if it is um, you know some one of the various African languages or in Hindi or Urdu or whatever the situation is you need to learn it in your language learn something from it in the tafsir so that way you can benefit so it's not just there are many people who've memorized the Quran but their children went astray 
because they, they don't practice it. They don't understand it. And they go into bid'ah. They fall into sectarianism in groups. They could end up with Jamaat al Ahbash. They could end up with the Shia. They could end up with anyone if they don't understand the meanings, if they don't go back to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intended by those verses. And that can only come from Kitab ila wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the method of the salaf of this ummah. So, my beloved brothers and sisters, we have to teach our children. And we have to teach them sincerely. You know, give them that meaning as we mentioned. And both of those components of teaching the morality, teaching the Qur'an and the deen, in addition to that, we don't want to stop with just the Qur'an. And this is something we see many parents from various nationalities, and I won't mention them, but some of them, mashallah, they are very good with teaching their children the Qur'an, sending their children to schools to learn the Qur'an. But you do not see them making an effort and an emphasis for their children to learn more than just the Qur'an, but learning something from the Sunnah and learning how to practice religion. There are many people who have memorized the Qur'an who don't know anything about Islam, unfortunately. And if we take that path for our children, it will not benefit the community, nor will it benefit your children completely. Meaning they'll have some good, but where they stopped, not only will they have shortcomings, but they will not be able to deal with the outside world, with dealing with how to implement those verses that they've memorized, how to Im Im implement and, and use the Qur'an, because they will not be able to, uh, they will not understand the religion. And I'll tell you a true story. I used to have a business in the mall. And I recall once a meeting a woman, she was from Pakistan. And she said, yes, I grew up and I, I memorized the Quran. And she said, I'm a Christian now. I said, subhanAllah, you're the first Pakistani Christian I've ever met. What happened? And she just said, you know, I, uh, you know, she said, my parents used to force me to memorize the Quran and da, 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 da. And I didn't understand it and da, da, da. And so that was sufficient for me to understand that, hey, she didn't even learn about Tawheed. She didn't even learn about who, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who Allah is, how to worship Him properly. She didn't know uh, Tawheed al rububiyyah that Allah's lordship. Uh, she didn't know Al-Uluhiyyah. She didn't know that all worship belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And she didn't know al asma wa sifat She didn't know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had divine names and attributes and to call upon Him and supplicate Him and the uniqueness of His subhanahu wa ta'ala attributes and names that are revealed in the Qur'an and affirmed by Allah and revealed in the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. And with this, it explained why she had went astray. So it shows us that we have to have, in addition to teaching our children the Qur'an, we, they need to know something from the Sunnah. They need to know about the religion. They need to have the correct aqidah, the creed. They need to know the creed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah so that they don't go astray, either leaving the religion in totality or going to other uh, sects and, and ways which were not uh, uh, authenticated or not authorized by Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah did not say it was permissible to be Shia. That's you. It's not from the Quran, it's not from the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, nor the Sahaba Radiallahu Ta'ala and Ajmain. Allah did not legislate for us to be from Jamaat al Ahbash, to start a new sect, a new way. Some guy after 1400 years of the Prophet والسلام, comes up with a new methodology, a new way of understanding of Islam that he mixed from various Sufi tariqas. That, that's not permissible. But if your children are not given the tools, they won't know how to distinguish between that nor this. And the Prophet وسلم, said, "Man yuridullahu bihi khayran yafqahu fi din." He said, "Whoever, whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives them understanding of the religion." We have to give our children that chance to understand the religion by teaching them, by giving them the chance to get fiqh fi din, to get knowledge of the religion, and 
that will come by allowing them to study. If we have the ability to put them in Islamic schools, this is great. If we don't have the finances and, and we don't have them in a Muslim country which is suitable and a suitable learning environment, they need to be somewhere. You need to have the ability to teach them or a tutor or something. You need to provide that stimulus, the correct stimulus to teach them their religion. They need to know their correct creed. They need to know the correct menhaj of giving da'wah. They need to know uh, who the Sahaba were, radiallahu ta'ala ajma'in, and how to follow, and the, the uh, foundations of the religion. And so we ask Allah the Almighty to protect our children and preserve our children because they're the future of Islam and they're the future of our, our nation. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our many sins and our many shortcomings with regards to our children. And may Allah bless our children to love us and respect us and bless us to love and respect our children. And may Allah forgive us all of our sins and bless the Ummah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.